Yeah, it was very intense. Uh, obviously, no one expected the scoreline and uh, the way the game started. I think the first half was just really bad luck for Chelsea. Um, I think uh, the way they conceded early on, the first two goals especially, um, I think that just set the tone for the rest of the game. Um, and, uh, um, you know, against a big team and against a very strong team like Barcelona, if you go down 2-0 in the first, I don't know, maybe eight minutes... um it's very very difficult to come back uh, out of it and especially the fact that i think it was just a huge stage for chelsea who had a lot of inexperienced players who could not really i think cope up to the you know the pressure that comes with champions league final um um i think that was just I, we could see it right from the first whistle we could see that um they were not themselves all the players um including some of the be- big players um sam kerr frank kirby you could see from the start till the final whistle they were just not um the way they they were supposed to be or what we expected them to be um and and uh, you know full credit to barcelona the way they started off um from right from the first whistle the way they attacked you could see that hunger you could see that desire um you could see the you know that they, they wanted revenge uh, after that 2019 defeat um they had come out with a plan they knew um they were going to go for it right in the first whistle and that's what they did um and you know just absolutely they were a class apart uh, from chelsea um and i think emma hayes and uh, and all the other players also accepted um after the, in the post match conference they accepted um that they were a better team and and that's that's graceful i think that's um, full credit to crash for chelsea also um for, for them to accept it and learn from it it's, it's a huge learning opportunity the way barcelona did in 2019 um i think that was the same kind of experience that chelsea um has had this time and i'm sure that you know they've had a great season obviously there's no doubt about uh, the quality of this team um but i think just it, they just um uh, could not handle the pressure of uh, the champions league final yeah i think they play to their strengths you know they, they their strength is to hold the ball and um, they feel very confident and comfortable with the ball and it was going to it was going to come down to does chelsea let them have the ball and you know attack on the counter or does chelsea change their tactic and sort of break up play in barcelona's half and really um, you know make it very sort of um, cut out the fluidity but uh, the game really you know ended before it even began with the shock own goal and then the penalty decision within the first 15 minutes so anything that chelsea had planned was completely thrown upside down because they were struggling to just settle into the game you know not even implement their strategy they were settling to just they were like struggling to even pass the ball around and make clean passes to each other so i think whatever tactics they had i don't know if it would have worked or not because i don't think it was implemented to a great extent i think barcelona credit to them we talk about the, the first goal being a freak own goal but but lique martins hit the bar within 20 seconds so clearly yeah. they they came out very strong they completely dominated our full back the our full backs had a really uh, you know a game to forget but i think a game to learn a lot from and yeah barcelona completely deserved that win yeah exactly so one thing was that both the teams actually started off playing 4-3-3 right so both of them were pretty much looking to attack from either ways and with good reason though because it's a final right but i think pretty much uh, where sort of chelsea lost out is on barcelona's press i mean i really thought that barcelona won't be able to keep that press going but man their lungs they, they just kept at it they did not slow down on their press at all because every time there was a goal scored i was like okay okay it's just it's just a free goal okay it's just a penalty but you know after the third goal it just it just did not make sense i was like what is happening because i think their first attack started like like you guys said from that first whistle right so i mean i think chelsea was just rattled and barcelona made the best use of that i think one um i just uh, want to add there that one uh, area where i think the uh, barcelona absolutely dominated was playing in those tight spaces um they were just so easy on the ball even when even in the second half when chelsea were uh, you know doing a high press and trying to uh you know uh tighten the angles and tighten the space smaller the um area they were so they were playing playing out from uh, from those tight spaces also very easily um i think that shows the the technical uh, and uh, you know uh, tactical uh, experience that the barca players had um and of course that goes on to the the kind of a cat you know a lot of these players in barcelona come from the academy 
Uh, and you could see the similarity in playing style with the men's team and the women's team. Um, I think that's that's the biggest factor here. Um, they knew they don't want to change their playing style. Barcelona, when you when you think of Barcelona, you know the kind of playing style that uh, you can expect from them. And I think Emma Hayes also expected that. I think uh, before the match also she um, she accepted and she predicted that they, there'll be a lot, uh, major part of the game that they will be playing without the ball. We also knew that, but uh, the way they did um, was just amazing. And in fact, I was, um, you know, listening to the interview of uh, Vicky, uh, who's the captain of uh, Barcelona. And she said that uh, it's not about winning, but it's about how you win. And that's just amazing. You know, that just shows the kind of character these players have and what what the, the, the kind of mentality that has been engraved in each of the players coming out of this academy, come on, coming out of this uh, club. Um, and that's just amazing. You know, they, they, they didn't just want to play, but they wanted to dominate uh, in every as- aspect. And they did. Um, so full credit. And, and they, you know, we're all very impressed. We're all, we're just, you know, mind blown by the way Barcelona played today. I think the way they played showed that they are the best in Europe. Um, and I, I think it's just unfair to say that just because they they dominated their league doesn't mean that it was easy. Yeah, definitely. I think uh, they've got a Spanish spine, this Barcelona team. You know, they don't have too many overseas players. And I, I, I'm pretty sure I can put my money on it when I say that the amount of girls pouring into that academy next year is going to be uh, something unprecedented. And it comes down to the way this team has dominated, the way that they've set an example, paved the way, saying that, you know, um, we've come out of this club right from the time we were eight or ten years old and we've done great things with this club. You know, it, it sort of personally lifts the name of Barcelona. I think the women have been carrying the, the, the team, the you know, the Barcelona crest for a year now. They've absolutely dominated um, any game that they've played. And it's, it's, it's incredible. You know, grassroots is where everything begins. And many times we forget that because we don't see returns immediately. But we're seeing the returns now, right? You, you finally got the return. So it's time yeah. to continue that investment in the grassroots. And we'll see a lot of girls pouring into this academy. You know, I think even in Emma Hayes' pre-match interview, she said that, you know, Barcelona is coming with a lot of homegrown players. And she was actually very impressed at their structure as well. So, you know, that actually says a lot, you know, coming from someone who stayed at Chelsea for almost eight to nine years and cultivated their squad. For her to say that Barcelona is coming with so many homegrown players is huge. Barcelona was the team that actually did their homework for this match. They did not let Kirby and Kerr combine at all. Kirby was completely marked out of the equation. I think throughout the game, yeah. there was not one single, like a good shot on target where, uh, where the keeper had to make like a brilliant save or anything. I think one player from Chelsea that I think gave everything was Eriksson. Um, I think she gave gave her all. Um and uh, right from the first whistle till the till the last uh, whistle, she played like a captain. She led uh, the team, and uh, hats off to her from for coming back from an injury, um, you know, to 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 be with the team and lead the team in this in the final. Yeah, I think I, I tweeted this out yesterday as well. It, it felt like someone was playing a game of FIFA and the Chelsea controller was out of battery. It just <laughs> nothing was going right. You know, if, right from the get go, um, after everything took place, I think it's proof. This is like proper proof that you cannot simulate the pressure that comes with the Champions League final. You have to be there and experience it. You know, we've only had Pernilla Harder in our side who has experienced yeah. that, whereas the entire Barcelona squad has. And it's, I mean, I am convinced now more than ever that you had to have experienced a final yeah. to understand what comes with that atmosphere and with that environment. So I think Chelsea have taken a lot away from this game. First half, I think, you know, we just, we were, we were not able to make passes. Our players were not moving into spaces. It just, we were very, very much on the back foot. And of course, four goals down, there's a completely different psychological element there. And whatever Emma Hayes told them at half time, we came out in the second half and sure, we didn't concede, right? But I don't think Barcelona were even looking to score too much. So while we had a better second half, it was like nowhere, nowhere up to what Chelsea is capable of playing. And that's why when people kept messaging me saying, oh, they played much better in the second half, I said, barely, you know, they, they didn't have any good attacking chances. They didn't, they didn't have that Chelsea spark. And I think um, I was most disappointed with that, that there was no fight in the game. I would have really loved to see a close game. Although if we had lost a close game, it would have hurt much more. But yeah, look, I think we just missed that Chelsea spark. And uh, hopefully we, we take this uh, experience, we turn it around and we bring back um, you know, the trophy the next time here. 
I think, like I said, there's just too, too much pressure. Barcelona was better equipped to handle that pressure of uh, the the finals because they've. I think seven out of those eleven players who were player who started off this game had played the 2019 final, so they had the experience of um, you know the Champions League final. Um, So I think that played a huge role, and I honestly expected more from Harder. Um, having that experience, uh, she should have probably done more. We knew before the game that uh, the fullbacks are going to have a lot of uh, uh, you know trouble. Uh, Chelsea fullbacks are going to have a lot of trouble. That that was the weak link of Chelsea, and Barcelona exploited and made the most of it. Uh, I think Carter and Charles. A lack of experience. Um, you know, more, I think most of the attacks were con- were uh, made from the flanks. and uh, they knew where the weak point of chelsea was and they made the most of it yeah i think rather i think we spoke about i think you were talking about this as well about how it's going to be like a midfield battle so i think that's exactly what happened in this match barcelona yeah. midfield just outclassed chelsea midfield in terms of ball possession in terms of just playing triangles around. i i honestly felt yeah. like sophie eagle and g were just playing monkey around their rondo game yeah. Yeah, I think Aitana Bonmati, part of the midfield, the midfield that completely uh, wrecked Chelsea. I think you know there was no question about it. It, it was quite honestly spe- a moment of like speechlessness. That, and I was wondering that if Chelsea had showed up, if Chelsea had showed up as if they had come to play a final, I think Barcelona still would have performed the way they did. They were just that good. They were in the moment. They had this hot streak. And I think the third goal was just. Pure Barcelona. We had five people there, and they just completely dissected our line with one-two passing. It was it was beautiful to watch. You know, unfortunately, it went into the went into my net, which was uh, disappointing. But it was a beautiful goal to watch and a well-deserved victory. I think um, their celebrations after, you know, it means so much to this team. And of course, they've had a clear project in mind after having lost the final a couple of years ago. And hopefully, Chelsea have a similar project in mind now or already in the works. It was overall a team effort. You could see uh, when when Barcelona was attacking, it was everyone was going forward, everyone was contributing. There were uh, you know the space was narrow. There were a lot of players to play. You know, a lot of support always available when uh, the uh, Barcelona players had the um, had the ball. And same defensively, I, I think uh, every time uh, Chelsea won the ball. Uh, You know they got back very quickly, got into position, got got back into their shape very quickly, and uh, always had support even defensively. It's just incredible. I, I'm so glad that uh, Barcelona played the way they did because um, the boys <laughs> weren't uh, weren't up to the mark uh, in the in the league. So I'm glad that the the women's team did it for us. Yeah, and I think the center the starting center back for Barcelona was. Was suspended. Like, what the hell? How do you? It was that. Imagine Eriksson being suspended. Like, we would crumble further than we already did. So to actually make an adjustment in uh, positioning, you know, a player from midfield coming into centre back, cur- curtailing a, a very strong trio that have peaked at the right time in Kerr, Kirby, and Harder. I think fantastic strategy play, whatever it was. Kirby was silent throughout the game, and I think credit to um, Barcelona putting that kind of pressure on them for the first time watching Chelsea this season. I saw. Hesitation, right? I saw Kirby not like putting her head down and driving in. Instead, like you know, taking a step back and looking up, and nobody was there in place. And it was it was a lot of um, chemistry that was lacking. And I think um, that comes down to Barcelona being able to subdue Chelsea more than Chelsea just not figuring out what's happening. So I think credit to Barcelona, even playing mind games and playing the game when they didn't have the ball. I think it was a all round really good performance. Yeah, they have, and I think it comes down to uh, the managers being committed for the long run. And Luis Suarez and Emma Hayes both, I think, are definitely committed, and they they wanted to see their team progress and wanted uh, they haven't considered this a stepping stone, right? I think that's a really good quality in a manager where many times coaching a, ma- a women's side is considered a stepping stone. I think we we see that with people in the national setup, so club setup. I don't even know what could possibly go on there, but it's very good to see that they've considered development of the team. As their first priority and not their personal gains or whatever. So I think definitely they've had this project in mind, and it's really good that it's paid off. Uh, apart from Emma Hayes, who's probably Casey Stoney just starting off now, and we all know how that turned out, right? So I think ha- uh, having you know insightful managers and managers with a lot of foresight is important as much as their owners are. I think if the club philosophy and like how their owners work, and if that doesn't agree with Uh, a manager's, you know, vision for a squad is not going to happen, right? Because at any point, a manager can only do so much. He's, they they definitely need that kind of support from the entire club structure, from their fans, their supporters, the kind of you know facilities that they're given, and Chelsea as well. I mean, credits to them; they reached the final, so I think that's still a win. 
one thing that is common for both the both of these teams is the fact that they've invested heavily in their grassroots structure in the academy and and of course the first team as well and that shows uh, like mithila and radha said that uh, the kind of commitment from the owners uh, to invest that kind of uh, money in um, in women's football uh, where uh, they're treating women's football and men's football equally i was talking about uh, the interview that i i was uh, uh, seeing of, uh, of of the captain vicky and she she pointed out that one of the things as as a senior player and as the captain of barcelona one of the things that she is expected to do from the manager uh, what the manager expects her to do is to uh whenever a new player comes into the team uh one of the things that she has to do is get them up to date about the culture of the team how how the team has to behave both on and off the pitch and i think that makes a lot of difference the way the team bonds um and understand each other both on and off the pitch plays a massive role uh when it comes to big matches like these uh where you have to support each other you have to have each other's back um and you know you could at the end of the obviously they won but you could see at the end of the uh, of the of the match also the way the team celebrated together with the staff um the kind of chemistry that all these players had uh, was amazing and i think that makes a lot of difference when when you're playing at that competitive uh, level ultimately i think it because it's a team sport it, there has to be a cohesiveness and chemistry um the players need to be comfortable you could see that from barcelona you know whenever they had the ball uh each of the players knew where they had to be uh, they knew where you can expect your player to be um and and you could see the third and fourth goal i think they were amazing amazing team goals um they they knew their quality uh, got the ball they, the other player knew where to run where she can expect that cross or where she can uh, expect that ball and that's something that you, that you can't that can't be taught you know that just comes with experience that comes with experience and and understanding of each other um, uh, yeah like i said <laughs> um, barcelona was just a class apart yeah i think it's very simple you know we we talk about united and their men's team have this rich rich history and it boggles my mind that their women's team has existed for just 3 or 4 years now right it's it's honestly it's a perfect example of how women have been an afterthought in football and how it's a male dominated space and that that's what has to change it's as simple as that as soon as you pull them up on par you start looking at them as equals you'll automatically start investing in them you've got this massive fan base they'll start they'll get invested in the women's team as well i've seen so many new manchester united fans personally have got them involved in the women's side right and obviously they've really enjoyed watching it so i think it just comes down to looking at them as equals they're part of your club of course you have to then bring in facilities i think a, a you know casey stony an ex player a legend of the game who's now come into coaching she's the best person to know what these players need how they train what is good for them health medical facilities everything and she stepped down saying that you know whatever unofficially that we're not getting uh, the decent investment we need the resources we need you know they they've been saddled with injuries and none of them have been able to recover in time so i'm not sure what the medical staff and support has been like so i think it's very simple that it's almost a, a statement right it's a statement that she's saying that i'm not going to be part of this if you cannot provide us what we deserve and i think casey stony is an asset wherever she goes and united have lost this big asset and if they don't start pouring in investments asap they're going to lose players and eventually they're going to lose any sort of status that the women's team had potentially gained in the last four years we are uh, hosting the under 17 world cup um and i think that's that's amazing because these youngsters will have the chance to play at the international level against the best countries in the world uh but i think that you know it needs to be consistent we need to have a proper uh structure a proper system to to bring those players up and and that can only come when they're playing matches regularly and i think that's the biggest need of the hour uh, in my opinion right now uh, that uh, india needs How, do you guys actually believe that that was a penalty honest answers only um yeah i mean it was a soft penalty right. soft penalty but uh, but i think <laughs> but the, I mean, even, on, it's a fine there was a push there was a push on uh, one of the chelsea players as well and that was not given a penalty yes. on maga yes that should have yeah, been a penalty exactly exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. if if that the previous one is a penalty and, and i was surprised cuz we penalty. had the var and uh, and and still the penalty was not given so that was surprising uh, but I, i don't know but the var has always been very unpredictable so yeah i think the, the fact yeah. that the officiating has not had experience with var right i mean when 
Lloyd Paul sort of went ahead of Jenny Hermoso and Hermoso swung and missed the ball and then finally like made contact with Lloyd Paul's in front of her yeah. and then fell and the ref immediately called it but surely you have to do a double check surely the ref has the, the technology is allowed to use the technology surely yeah. you have to check that in a final because Lloyd Paul you know accidentally scored that own goal and then having mm-hmm. conceded a penalty making us 2-0 down she was yeah. off her game she was subbed yeah. at half time that completely yeah. changed the face of everything for us and then of course in the next half when magda was pushed in the d somehow the referee called a foul for barcelona as in barcelona got the ball and they took a kick and that just completely boggled my mind but i think we were also numbed with everything that had happened that we just let it pass but I, i'm not sure how magda fouled her while having had the ball and you know being pushed from the back so again i think the officiating could have been better but that doesn't take away from the dominance that barcelona displayed last night Yeah I mean you know officiating is not used to it players are not used to it every nobody is really used to it right and you surely have to ease it in to the domestic league first test it out there then bring it to the the knockout stages of a champions league and finally to the biggest game of the entire season so i'm not really sure why they put it in here and on the other hand they put it in here and didn't use it when they could that again is like just one of those things that you have to laugh at at women's football and you know just really fix the hell out of that asap because uh, yeah it can really cause trouble in upcoming matches you could see the you could sense the frustration of a chelsea fan <laughs> <laughs> yeah man the one time i don't, I like, I don't think that would have made a lot of difference to the score score uh, rada if they yeah. passed on i would still it wouldn't have it wouldn't yeah also i mean come on man. i feel like it would have been <laughs> yeah it's 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 hindsight right we don't really know what would have gone on but again yeah, 1-0 versus a 2-0 and then Roy Poles who's off a game means our midfield is not really connecting and then we have to bring right in who did well yeah it was just a, a weird but i think overall i will try to forget i agree but i think overall the quality of uh, barcelona players was just a class apart um if, okay. you know considering everything um i agree that the, the scoreline could have been different but i think um uh, I think still Barcelona would have dominated and won the game. Uh, the scoreline could have been different, yeah. yes, but uh, uh, you know the quality and the technicality of this Barca, these Barca players was just amazing to watch. Yeah, agreed. I was actually yeah. a little bit envious when they scored the third yeah. goal because I was hoping Chelsea could link up like that. I think that was one of the most beautiful goals I've seen in yeah. in a, quite a while, in quite a few months. So yeah, it was it was. all round perfection by barcelona they could not have asked for a better game so chelsea fans meanwhile who are like blaming the kids so i mean what can i say <laughs> <laughs> it's the new kid you guys <laughs> it, it, i mean they have to blame the kid two finals would you want in, in would you want the men's team to play the champions league final in the old kit <laughs> <laughs> yes please we i cannot <laughs> watch this kid for the entire next season how do we stand watching this kid knowing that our first appearance was a loss to champions league it's, i don't know how i watch that but hopefully we can turn it around we we won the domestic double we can hopefully make it a treble when the fa cup comes around but yeah i mean the kid it kind of it's okay it's going on me but after this loss i'm i'm not a big fan of it yeah they blinded us we were we were just blinded by the the pain and we could not see really anything so all the chelsea fans ah the number of excuses from these chelsea fans <laughs> also i was telling radha that these guys so my initial prediction was them winning 2-1 and then i was like no no you guys will win 2-0 and then she the first thing that she said was no it's a jinx i'm telling you i jinx it yeah What are you doing, yeah? <laughs> Salty Bayern fan. <laughs> Man, the one time I decide to support you guys and you screw up like this. What can I say? Thanks for not supporting Barca. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so I'm the weak link here now. <laughs> Great. I would prefer a system. I always get my bag ready a uh, night before that, and I don't want to miss anything. Earlier, I used to uh, listen to music. but then it kind of got very confusing what kind of music to listen to and um, you know what kind of beat cuz it def- you know it depends on my mood um what kind of um intensity of the songs that i want to hear but uh, now i've started reading a book um on our way to the game so that has made a lot of difference for me at personally for me i think uh, when you're playing for the country there's a huge responsibility especially as a goalkeeper there are a lot of expectations um uh, when we go into a game so just want to forget all of that and just focus on being myself enjoying the game and doing the basics right so just to get uh my focus on what needs to be done and 
uh, so i i like prefer reading a reading book um uh superstition i prefer uh, you know putting my left glove on uh, before uh, the right glove so those are little things um which i don't like to talk about a lot uh, <laughs> because that just messes with your head the only superstition i have and i i will ever have in my life is i am a sock shoe sock shoe person and not a sock sock shoe shoe person. oh my god please please just chat this, this is the problem I this, knew is, it. this is the problem oh my goodness <laughs> <laughs> Dude, come on! It just feels right, you know. Like every time I do a sock, sock, and then shoo shoo, it just feels like my other foot is empty. I should finish one foot and then get to the other foot. That's what makes sense. I even do that for my shin guard. Now I know. <laughs> Now this is why this is why you support it, Chelsea and Jinx. That's because of this. Oh my goodness! Oh my, my goodness, Nikola! No, no, no! I don't have any spe- specific superstitions. I think um, I think our team has it. Like our, one time, our captain didn't wear her armband in one game, and we said, "Like you're not wearing it for the rest of the games." And then we won the <laughs> final. So I think uh, as, as a team, we have this thing. But yeah, otherwise, uh, nothing too much. Because then, like, if we lose, then I'm very confused. Like, do I continue the superstition? Do I cut it off? Like, it it like messes with my head, and I just won't get sleep. So yeah. I don't. I don't have too many. I think everyone in the comments is really upset with uh, Mithila wearing oh, shit. the yeah. I know. Shoe socks. <laughs> I know. Honestly, I know. I brought this on myself. I've I've <laughs> never seen anyone do that. I say. Oh. Are you <laughs> serious? Come on, there must be yeah, someone who does that. Yeah, everyone wears the socks first because you wear the shoes at the end, right before you absolutely have to when no, you're stepping I mean, out. So. You, Hey, see, I'll tell you what my logic is. Okay, I'll tell it you doesn't make sense. So you basically yeah. no. See, you basically wear both your socks, and then if you want to stand, you're going to stand on like socks and get the socks dirty. So you might as well wear a sock shoe, so, and the other foot's barefoot, so it doesn't matter. That you doesn't get it? make you sense. You get where I'm coming from? <laughs> But it doesn't make sense. <laughs> <laughs> that, I would rather get the socks dirty does. than my feet. If you get your feet yeah, dirty and then I, you wear your socks, isn't isn't the socks going to no, become but, dirty? No, I mean you should also clean like your feet before. Like why are we discussing this? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> oh Who man. asked you to share this? Oh my god! I feel secret. like an alien now. Shit! I feel like such an alien. Oh my god! <laughs> okay, yeah, come on! I'm sure there's a. I'm sure. I'm sure there's a sock shoe, sock shoe person. No. So when you when you're playing football, is it then is it sock shoe shin guard and then sock shoe shin guard? You go no, no, shin guard's different. in the end. Shin guard's in the end. Okay. Thank God, thank God. Guys, this is supposed to be about Chelsea superstitions and them being obsessed with their kid. I don't know how this came down. <laughs> <laughs> it it is a team. Ultimately, a team sport. As if you don't combine well as a team, it's very difficult to win matches. Um, having said that, I think individually, uh, everybody wants to. Who who doesn't want to give their hundred percent? Who doesn't want to play well? Who doesn't want to you know be a hero for the team? Um, when you have a lot of things going on in your head, obviously, like we said, we talked about uh, you know earlier, and that's the reason why I started off with uh, Chelsea not being able to handle the pressure of Champions League final because. um th- ultimately it's all down to your mentality uh, there's no doubt about the quality of these players they've won uh, two silverware this this season and that speaks volumes yeah we've we've talked about the comp- the kind of uh, kind of competitive league uh, we had in england wsl where it just went down to the wire uh, with man city and they still won that won the game and won the league um on you know uh, that showed that they had the mental strength but i think this this uh, the occasion of champions league final was just too big for them to handle and i'm sure that uh, the players have learned a lot we you know we've seen all the interviews of the players post match and they've all talked about uh, uh you know they've uh, about how much they've learned and how much they will grow as a team from this experience um like barcelona did from their experience in 2019 um so i think we we as fans as people who are watching these matches should realize how difficult it is to give your 100% in every single game every single uh, occasion every single match um and we just have to accept that these are everyone you know they're also human beings they they can also make mistakes sometimes just uh, you know that mental pressure takes over um and you start doubting yourself even you know something that something as basic as prop you know simple passing you mess me you mess it up just because you you your your head is clogged so uh, we can't really you can't complain you can't uh, point fingers at that point 
and of course uh, every every player who wears a badge who wears the jersey uh, wants to dare their do their best for 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 themselves for the team um for 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 their teammates especially because uh, like i said i ultimately it's a team sport and you don't want to be the one letting down the entire team so um that's always the case you don't want to be the one who's messing up uh, messing it up for the team so uh, we have to respect these players we have to give them full credit for what they've done all the season uh, for for that for winning these two um, silverwares um and reaching the final i mean uh, the kind of investment uh, the chelsea has made uh, to re- and and the kind of uh, opponents that they've overcome to reach the final is is amazing and uh, uh, and you know we bolsberg who's been um, uh, champions league winners uh, bayern munich um, again um, have been amazing uh, in in champions league uh, so overcoming these big opponents dominating them um, shows the kind of uh, players and kind of team this is so we need to respect that and uh, and respect these players you know they gave their best especially in the second half i think like i said first half was just, they just overwhelmed with the occasion second half they did their best um, it was a nil nil score in in second half and we need to respect that yeah if i can just quickly add to that i think um, as a chelsea fan and particularly talking about last night um, when you win or lose a game at such a big stage you first you see the character of the players and the team you know the staff and everyone involved on the field but you also see the character of the fans and the people who have been backing chelsea and how if you just turn on your team or you turn on a couple of players after losing a game you're not really one of those true fans and i think social media was not very pretty last night especially since i have a lot of chelsea circles and I'm, i've been talking to a lot of people who uh, support the chelsea women of course we've been on this golden run we've won the county cup the wsl we've really been doing well in the champions league up till now so i think um it comes down to the character of the people as well and i think for anyone listening be active about um calling them out it's not a, i think if you're silent you're almost complicit and i think that's why it's important to have these conversations is that if you see someone trolling and if you see um abuse or hate going directed towards a player or a pundit we saw the entire case with karen carney in december i think it's important to call it out and make sure i think that's the only way it's going to um, get you know we're going to get rid of it so i think even the social media boycott to some extent while i supported it and you know i wanted it to achieve its goal maybe silence isn't the answer i don't think it is i think the fact that you gain numbers you know you you need to have numbers around your cause and calling people out is the way to do that so i think um we we really did see who are the true fans of chelsea last night and who were just almost glory hunters just you know waiting for uh, silverware at all times but i think uh, for chelsea as a team the run that they've had this season three tournaments uh, three medals that they've taken home it's been a, it's been a great season and of course we backed them to win or a loss um and they made us really proud i think a lot to learn from this and hopefully they have a similar project that barcelona had a couple of years ago and they come back much stronger i think that for for people to actually see their three, their team through especially like chelsea fans at this at this point who's like who are you know just going around comment section saying it's a disgrace or this team doesn't deserve it or something like that i mean what are you really trying to achieve by doing that you know like okay it's just a bunch of words you're going to throw around and you're going to leave but you're not really contributing to anything you're not doing anything good to to, to the cause to the team to anything at all you're just throwing around words which actually make no make no sense at that point there's no need for that so i think one of one of the comments that i got yesterday uh, one of my friends actually did was that uh, she this was a uh, you know one sided final who's going to watch this right but that's coming from a person who's only watching the final they have no idea about the history of both the teams how they performed in uh, their league stages why we were hyping them up so much right so i think for someone like that to just come and say you know hey this was you know one sided it's boring and all that it's i mean it's not really doing anyone any good so i mean i think like radha said and like for the amount of like good work she's been doing with all her posts and uh, you know promoting and uh, you know taking the sport forward i think yeah i mean learn something man yeah i think uh, it's important like uh, radha said that uh, we need to use these platforms to educate the ones who uh, who are not aware um, it's important it's great that we're talking about it it's important for us to be educating these people who uh, who spread uh, hate on on the internet um, i think that's the that's the way that's the positive way of using social media uh, using these platforms to educate them rather than you know uh, boycotting social media i don't think that's the answer like rather i agree with her um uh, it's it's great to be discussing it i think the, more of these discussions um, are important uh, 
and education is the way to uh, to bring more positivity and uh, let them know what is right yeah i'm i am excited yeah. about the new structure of uh, w uh, uwcl uh, the women's champions league it's going to be interesting uh, i still need more clarity i need, still need more uh, I, i need to educate myself about the new structure because it's kind of confusing um but i yeah. think that'll be a great uh, new topic to be discussing and uh, i i, I want to see how that uh, uh, you know affects or changes uh, women's football how how what kind of effect that has on women's football um because uh, i think uefa has changed uh, has prioritized five main changes in their new strategy and one of them is uh, changing the structure of champions league so i'm excited about the the new structure and how um, it uh, has an effect on women's football yeah same uh, they released the, the uefa the women's champions league anthem today so if anyone's listening go check that out it's it's a pretty um, badass anthem it's got a lot of like powerful um you know it, it's a very powerful song i think and yeah of course that the, the the entire structure i really love that nadine kessler who's the the director of women's football at uefa is an ex player has won champions league knows what it is about and i just love that when women stay within the game even after retiring and hanging up their boots it's awesome to see the strides that she's made in the a few years that she's been uh, with uefa and hopefully you know it moves forward we've got a 16 16 team group stage which is already giving more opportunities yeah. to teams to compete at the highest level so yeah very very exciting now obviously the season has ended i'm not sure what to do for the next couple of months until the olympics come around but yeah we'll have to keep ourselves busy there's nwsl yeah but there's still nwsl yeah 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 of course of course we'll have to change our entire sleep schedule for that But yeah, of course. <laughs> so interesting with the, the the Champions League new format is that runner-up teams in all the leagues from different countries have to play a mini qualifying tournament, yeah. and the yeah. third place teams have to play an additional qualifying tournament. So Arsenal has to get through two rounds to make it to the group of 16. So again, I think they have to be you know top of their game come July and whenever the, the qualifying round starts. So again, it's it's highly competitive now, and yeah, it's anyone's game. So it'll be fun to watch that also. I think we we all lost track of time while while talking and while Mithila was Yeah, talking. I think uh, yeah. Mithila's uh, song <laughs> theory just uh, took us to a different direction. <laughs> I knew that would come up. I love it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, Guys, you you just <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> just can we just take right, back great to chatting and about this. Um thanks for having time having us uh, wonderful talking about yeah, the absolutely. Champions League. Bye see you bye guys bye bye